nutritional ketosis is much different. So considering someone is a normal healthy person or not a type one diabetic uh, dependent on insulin, that when they follow a ketogenic diet, there are many different regulatory mechanisms that ensure that the level of ketones do not go uh, into the danger zone, into a, you know above five or six millimolar. So we have ketone urea, so we eliminate ketones in our urine, and that's an energy source. So we are eliminating maybe a hundred calories a day, you know, of ketones. So so there's some truth that you know we are you know peeing out calories to some extent, but we also as we also have a, a fine-tuned metabolic physiology sort of countermeasures, and one is that an elevation of blood ketones will trigger a small release of insulin from the pancreas. And insulin, even a small amount, will decrease beta oxidation of fats in the liver. So if your ketone levels are elevated, you have a small pulse of insulin, and that will turn down ketone production. And there's a number of other pathways, but that's the two main pathways that you have ketone-induced insulin release and ketone urea, which keep your ketone levels in a very tight range physiologically when we're talking about nutritional ketosis in the context of someone not in type 1 diabetes. So the most exciting thing about being a researcher on nutritional ketosis is that there are many different conditions that we know are highly responsive to uh, being in a state of nutritional ketosis therapeutically. And when I first got into this field of research, the only thing that was really being studied was pediatric epilepsy. So since then, and fast forward a decade later, there are literally you know, well over a dozen, up to two dozen different things that you could put under the umbrella of proven applications and emerging applications. So the top proven applications of the ketogenic diet, I would say, without a doubt, we now know uh, epilepsy, of course, and epilepsy disorders, uh, you know, what we study, glucose transporter type 1 deficiency syndrome. You know, long name, the standard of care for that, for children to live and thrive and be able to function, is a ketogenic diet.